Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. Sorry we haven't done a video in a little while. Things have been a little busy here at the farm. Doug was getting all the hay ready, ready to go, started baling, and I think the 11th bale in. One of the rollers on the top of the hay baler bearings gave way and uh, broke. So fortunate for us, Bobby's a machinist and has a metal lathe, and he was able to make the parts needed to fix it. Came over and within a half hour, Doug was back out there baling again. And we got over 70 bales of hay, which is really good for us for our first cutting, so real happy about that. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the results from the Rockwool and the Oasis comparison. I'm going to show you a little bit of tip burn, some greenhouse update, you know, stuff that's going on around here at the farm. So stay tuned. Well, today's a sad day. I'm going to be pulling my green beans. We harvested over 125, 130 pounds off. I'm not exactly sure because I didn't measure how much I put up for us. I like to freeze green beans. But did pretty good with these guys, so I think I'm going to plant them again. But with this hot weather, they're just kind of limping along, not producing like they should, so it's time for them to go out. And I learned a little bit. I put too many bean plants in each beto bucket. Having six in each one, it was a little too dense for me to try to harvest. So I'm going to try to do maybe three or four. I'm not sure yet, haven't decided. But I'm going to pull these today, and I think I showed you in a previous video, what I do is I cut the bottoms off the beto buckets. I snap them right at the root and then I go through and hack off in the middle and just take them down in sections. So I got to get the ladder up because they're way up there. And you guys see those beans up there? I'm still going to put those up because they still taste really good. So here's my job for today. I know we talked about uh, tip burn before, so here's some tip burn. And you know that's when the plant can't transpire enough and it starts closing up. So this is my romaine. My mark is not for another day or so, but I'm going to go ahead and harvest this before it really starts closing up and the air can't circulate around there and I get really bad tip burn. Because there's nothing worse than cutting open a head of romaine and having all the edges all, the edges all black and gross. So that's what, another thing to get done today. It's interesting what the heat does to your plants. Here's my bib lettuce, which is Rex, the cultivar, and the heads just get really dense when it gets hot out. So if they get super dense, then I sell them as bib hearts. And those are one of my favorite things to eat. So yesterday I harvested some toca bacana for yellow bird. And I had some extra here, because I always like to plant extra in case I have to double up on the bags. So I think I'll take this to the farm market this weekend and have a special on it. It's an open head cabbage, and it does really well with a sesame seed soy sauce type dressing on it. Nice and summery. This is a mini Swiss chard that I've been growing for years. It's one of my favorites. It really is good in sautéed in dishes and in omelets. But unfortunately, Johnny Seed has discontinued this type and I can't find the seed anywhere. So I'm going to a different type of uh, Swiss chard and I'm growing red because that's my favorite color. This is the red Swiss chard I'm growing. These guys are maybe five weeks old and they're really getting big. I'm going to take them to the market this week and hopefully they sell. I've taste tested them. They're pretty good. The um, other mini one has a little bit thicker leaf, which I kind of like, but I think the red will have some good antioxidants and it looks really pretty. Here's my watercress growing and since it's been so warm in here, it's getting flowers, but the flowers are edible. This kind of looks kind of cool. You just got to educate everybody that the flowers are edible. This is tatsoi put these guys in the channel just a couple days ago. They're for Yellowbird and they'll be ready in about three weeks. This lettuce is one of my farm market's favorite. Lots of people like this. It's a red and green oak leaf. I put two seeds together and it's a nice soft lettuce and it just kind of looks pretty. The red just gives it a little bit of pop and makes a really pretty salad. So just get creative and try different things together. I've been doing this for years and it really does well. Here's some Napa cabbage that's been growing. I was hoping to have it for the second market, but it didn't quite make a head yet. So it's going to be ready for next market. And you can see here it's nice and firm. It's another one you got to make sure you don't grow it when it's really hot out because it does get internal tip burn and you don't see it till you cut it open. Well, it's that time of year. Doug's up out in the hay fields cutting hay. So I told him I'd come and pick the tomatoes, do the harvest for the farm market. And then he'll come back in and cut the bottom branches off and lean and lower these guys and get them back in shape. But they're producing pretty good, so I should have quite a few for the market. So I was harvesting Asian cucumbers today and came across this little beauty. 
You never know what Mother Nature is going to throw at you. It's kind of cool looking. It was in the back, got overlooked, and all fused together. I'll keep that one for myself. And this is what happens when you don't pick a cucumber. You don't see it in the back. It gets huge. Here it is compared to that funky Asian one I have. Just absolutely huge cucumber. So I think I'll save him and put him in Doug's smoothies. Don't want him to go waste, but he's huge. Okay, so it's time to harvest the uh, Rockwool Oasis Cube experiment. These guys were planted eight weeks ago, harvesting today for the farm market coming up this weekend. So I wanted to weigh them out and see which one did better. So first of all, we have the uh, Rockwool here. This is Fusion. It's one of my favorite lettuces to grow and it's a big seller at the farm market. So this guy weighs 1.63. Okay, let's see what the Oasis Cube guy weighs. Oh my gosh, he also weighs 1.63. I can't believe it. I thought there would be a difference. And these guys are both in the same position in the channels on the end, which the uh, lettuce usually grows a little bit bigger than the ones that are in the middle. They're a little bit more um, crowded in together. So I'm going to do the same with some of the other cultivars I have out there. And I'll be interested to see if they both have the same weight. Okay, so I went out to the greenhouse and harvested a few more cultivars to do our little check thing here because it's going to get warm today, so I better get my butt moving and harvest a lot of stuff. So, first off, I have um, red Salanova oak leaf here, and this is the Oasis Cube. So, the Oasis Cube weighs 0.45, and let's see what the rock wool weighs. The rock wool weighs 0.44, pretty close and even. Okay, let's try. Uh, let's apply Rex. Okay, here's the Rockwool Rex. 0.78. And here's the Oasis Rex. 0.64. A little bit of a difference there, but pretty comparable, right in the range where I want to grow them. Here is Muir, which is a, one of my favorite leaf lettuces. It's really crispy and sweet. So here's the uh, Rockwool. 1.03. And here's my oasis, 1.08. Well, it looks like they grow comparable, you know, together, you know, with the different um, growing medium here. The heads still get as big and it's about the same size, which I'm really happy to see. The only thing that was different for me is I had a better germination rate with the oasis cubes. So I guess it's up to you and what you want to use, but for me, I'm going to stick with the oasis and uh, it's kind of cool doing this little experiment. Hope you guys enjoyed it too.
hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Doing the comparison with the Rockwell and the Oasis, I really saw how big my lettuce was getting. Yeah, you know, I did notice the years passed that it was getting a little smaller and smaller, and sometimes I'd have to double up the bags to um, make a nice head to sell at the farmer's market. But this year, since I did the deep clean last fall, what a difference. I really planted way too much lettuce because the lettuce heads are growing so big I don't have to hardly double any of them up and even the Asian greens and everything else I'm growing is just wonderful. I don't have all the um, pathogens in the water. So this year I've got a time scheduled in October. I'm going to shut down the greenhouse one more time and do a deep clean and I'm going to do it every single year because what a difference it makes. So that's a good lesson I learned. So like I said before, leave me any comments, questions, or suggestions down below, and we'll see you guys next video. I had to show you these shoes Doug got for me for the greenhouse. They're not too pretty, but they're really comfortable. My feet always bother me standing so much, though. So make sure you always have a good pair of shoes, no matter what they look like.